A pregnant woman's perfect life is crushed upon experiencing something horrific from her obstetrician. As her fight for justice gets rewarded, she fails to anticipate the upcoming nightmare a certain woman is brewing. At the Bartel's peaceful residence, a hooded man knocks on the door. Due to the singing of the father Michael and the daughter Emma, Claire, the pregnant wife, fails to hear the knocking. The man goes around the house and freaks out Claire as she sees a stranger by the glass window. Michael immediately comes to her aid and runs after the man. Moments later, they enter the house and the hooded man introduces himself as Solomon from the Better Day Society, an organization that gives employment to mentally challenged individuals. The family warmly welcomes him as he's here to fix the fence. Solomon and Emma instantly click as their mental age is almost similar. The couple assist the man outside as he asks their preferences about the fence. He begins measuring with his feet which makes the couple doubtful but he announces he's joking since he has a tape measure. The following day, Claire visits a maternity clinic for her prenatal checkup and the nurse builds the credibility of the obstetrician Dr. Mott to reassure the patient since it's her first appointment with them. The pregnant woman changes into a hospital gown and Dr. Mott instructs her to lie down for a pelvic exam, which surprises Claire since she's still in the early stage. Just as they're about to begin, the nurse requests some records and the doctor gives her another task to do, so she leaves. The doctor begins the procedure but Claire becomes uncomfortable as she feels a different kind of touch on the exams that aren't necessary, especially as the doctor removes his gloves during the pelvic exam. Claire leaves the clinic hurriedly and her asthma attacks due to the stress. She drives home and hits the fence as she rushes to the shower. Michael checks on her and she breaks down so she tells her husband what happened. However, she also doubts if she's being overly dramatic, so her husband ascertains her feelings and encourages her to report to the police. He promises his complete support and convinces Claire. Days after, Dr. Mott stands grimly in his room as news of his evil deed gets covered by the media especially since four more women stepped forward to testify against him. Seconds later, he takes a gun and the shot is heard. The following day, his name appears in the obituary and Michael brings the newspaper to his wife, who's coping by indulging herself with plants. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mott, the widow, learns that all of their assets are frozen due to the case, and her husband won't have any insurance due to the cause of his death. She's allowed to stay in their house until she gives birth, but is suggested to plan immediately. She struggles to stand up and collapses after a few steps. Mrs. Mott is immediately sent to the hospital, begging to save her baby. Unfortunately, the baby passes away and her uterus is removed. Opposite to her suffering, the Bartell family spends the day happily together. To make things worse, she sees the news about her husband and discovers that Claire is the first woman who stepped forward against the doctor. Six months later, the Bartels have a new baby and Solomon has grown closer to them, especially with Emma. Michael reminds Claire that she shouldn't take on everything by herself, just like when she did with Emma, especially since she's building a greenhouse and suggests that they can hire a nanny. The mom sends her daughter to school afterward, but Claire forgets to give a jacket. She tries to stop the school bus but fails. Seconds later, the bus stops, revealing a woman who deliberately helps her, so she manages to give Emma her jacket. Claire thanks the woman for stopping the bus, and the woman introduces herself as Peyton Flanders, who's looking for Bartel's residence for the nanny position. Claire apologizes for forgetting an appointment, but Peyton clarifies that she has no appointment or agency. She explains that the family she works for left, and as the nannies in the park talk, she discovers they require a nanny, which surprises Claire. They talk over a cup of tea, and the nanny narrates her past of losing her baby and husband in the same period and having her uterus removed, omitting the information that Dr. Mott was her husband. She points out that this is why she chose to be a nanny, since she believes being a mother is the greatest thing. Claire's infant cries, so the woman escorts Peyton to meet him. However, Solomon calls Claire, and she heads out. Peyton approaches Joe, the baby, but Claire and Solomon return, and the homeowner introduces the two to each other before feeding Joe. Peyton's white sleeve is messed with Solomon's painted hand, and she becomes upset. Solomon apologizes, but she pretends to be okay, unaware that the man can sense her real feelings. She stares at Claire and her baby in envy, but changes her facial expression and praises how beautiful Joe is. Then she bids farewell, but Claire invites her to dinner to meet the family. That evening, Peyton witnesses how loving the Bartell family is and stares in bitterness upon seeing the couple kiss. After dinner, Claire places Joe in the bassinet, and Peyton sees her earring drop on the floor. The couple excuses themselves for deciding if they'll hire the nanny. 
Peyton acts exaggeratedly and pretends that the earring Claire dropped is almost at Joe's mouth, so they become more thankful toward her. The next day, Peyton arrives at Bartel's residence as their in-house nanny and Solomon watches the stranger. At dawn, Peyton's alarm rings and she stealthily goes to Joe's room, covers the baby monitor, and breastfeeds him. One evening, Claire consults Peyton as she prepares for a double date. She shares that the dress is her husband's present, so it's very special. When she turns around, the nanny looks at the perfume oil. When Claire wears the dress, she notices a stain, so the nanny volunteers to get some cleaning material. Michael and his friend Marty arrive and greets Peyton. The friend becomes attracted to the nanny, but his wife, Marlene, arrives. She notices her husband's smile and spots the beauty, so she immediately introduces herself and comments she's poison. Peyton asks her to repeat, but the woman says it's the name of Claire's perfume she's wearing, so she leaves to assist Claire. Due to the dress accident, Claire wears an old-fashioned floral dress, which disappoints Michael. That evening, Peyton uses the chance to be alone with Emma to fish for information, and she discovers that Michael and Marlene used to be childhood sweethearts. However, what catches her attention is when the girl tells her about a bully named Roth at school and that Claire has tried to solve the issue but failed. At dinner, Marlene warns Claire not to let a beautiful woman in her house. She quotes that a hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Since then, Peyton always sneaks into Joe's room to breastfeed him. One day, the nanny strolls at a park with Joe and the woman mistakes the nanny for Joe's mother, but Peyton decides to play along. At a playground, Emma tells Peyton where her bully is. The woman charges at Roth and threatens him, earning the girl's respect. The following day, Claire tries to feed Joe, but the baby refuses. She asks Peyton if she notices anything wrong with the baby, but the nanny denies it. Michael bids goodbye and mentions a letter he needs to send, so the wife volunteers to do it for him. In the greenhouse, where Claire is rendering her services, she asks questions to Peyton to get to know her more. The nanny mentions that her only family is her husband, but his life was taken by somebody else. Still, she believes that what goes around comes around. She then excuses herself to the bathroom. Unbeknownst to Claire, the nanny takes Michael's letter, tears it, and wrecks the cubicle angrily. When they drop by the post office, Claire discovers that the letter is gone, so her asthma strikes while Peyton watches in satisfaction. That evening, Claire apologizes again for losing Michael's proposal letter. The man remains distraught since he may not have the chance again, so he tells his wife it's okay despite obviously being the opposite. He dismisses her calmly, but the heavy atmosphere remains. The following day, Claire shares her concern about Joe not eating in the morning, but when she checked with the doctor, he's gaining weight, so the two dismiss their concerns. Afterward, Peyton visits Michael at work to tell him about a surprise birthday party for Claire. She asks if Marlene can take over and requests not to let her know it's her idea. One afternoon, Solomon sees Peyton breastfeeding Joe, so the nanny threatens him that no one will believe him because of his disability. Then she slaps the man. Despite being scared, Solomon tells himself he'll protect his friends. Afterward, Solomon becomes anxious, but Emma gives him a bite, relieving his worries. While watching the two play, Claire comments how their friendship is wonderful, but Peyton puts shade on them by using the mother's trauma as she comments that she feels Solomon's way of touching Emma is inappropriate. The next day, the nanny asks if there are some batteries for the intercom in Solomon's cart, so Claire volunteers to find some since Peyton is carrying Joe. Unfortunately, the mother finds Emma's undergarment hidden in the cart, and when the carpenter pops out behind her, she attacks him and walks out, carrying Emma away. Peyton glares at him meaningfully, and the man understands it's a setup. Solomon is dismissed immediately and is taken by the organization. Emma watches her friend leave and expresses her anger to her mom by avoiding her and seeking comfort from Peyton instead. That evening, the nanny speaks with Emma before going to bed to intensify her anger toward her mom for kicking Solomon out. She reassures the girl by promising she'll take care of everyone. When Peyton and Claire have some alone time, the mother expresses her guilt toward Emma's anger, thinking her daughter blames her for not protecting her. But the nanny half-heartedly reassures her. To prepare for the surprise party, Marlene requests to have dinner with Michael and he discloses it with the nanny, expressing that the party may be bad due to the flow of things, but Peyton insists it's alright. Afterward, Marlene visits the Bartels and carries Joe. The nanny helps unload some things from the guest's car and sees the visitor's purse. The baby cries, so Claire takes him. Unfortunately, he doesn't calm down, so Peyton carries him and instantly soothes him, which doesn't sit well with Marlene. Then, Marlene sees a wind chime, which was a gift from Peyton to the Bartels. Afterward, Claire invites her for dinner, but she declines the offer due to her secret meeting with Michael for the surprise party. When Peyton is alone with the mother, she navigates a conversation about the couple's intimacy, how unattractive Claire is, and Marlene being Michael's first love. 
The nanny asks why the husband isn't around despite knowing the truth, so the wife gives him a call at work. Meanwhile, Marlene and Michael finalize the party's guest list and share some smoke. She comments that her lighter has been missing, so she takes Marty's. The woman inquires about Peyton and discovers that the family relies on her while Claire becomes more out of it. When the man arrives home, the wife interrogates him, pointing out he wasn't at work and he's been smoking. Late that night, Peyton deliberately makes noise in the kitchen. Michael awakens and takes a baseball bat for the intruder, but he sees the nanny in a nightgown. He bids goodbye, but Peyton seduces him more by prolonging the conversation. Still, Michael leaves immediately and holds Claire's hand tightly. The next day, the wife brings some of Michael's clothes for dry cleaning, but the owner sees a lighter in the pocket of the customer's tux. She takes it and sees it's Marlene's, so she cries as her asthma attacks again. Emma urges her to go inside the living room, but Claire commands her to go upstairs as she cries. Michael checks up on her and the wife throws the lighter at him, accusing him of infidelity. The husband tries to explain, but the wife yells at him for his affair. Michael shuts her off, stating everyone's inside for the surprise party, but the atmosphere is ruined with everyone feeling awkward and Marlene walks out. After the commotion, the couple speaks heart to heart and the husband suggests going on a trip. Claire declares leaving Peyton behind and Michael asks why. So she explains that bad things happen when she arrives, which the husband argues since the nanny has become a big help. In the end, they decide to have a vacation as a family. Unbeknownst to them, the nanny is eavesdropping through the baby monitor. The following day, when everyone's still asleep, Peyton messes with the greenhouse. Meanwhile, Marlene receives the files of the new house she's supposed to handle in the real estate firm. She spots Dr. Mott's house and notices a wind chime similar to the one Peyton gifted to the Bartels, so she hurriedly leaves to investigate. Soon, she discovers Peyton's real identity as Mrs. Mott, so she calls Claire, but the nanny answers. In the botanicals where Claire is, a colleague gives her a note that Marlene tells her to call, but she dismisses it. On the other hand, Marlene drives to the Bartels with urgency. When she arrives at their home, she sees only the nanny. She reveals Peyton's real identity and demands to see Claire, so the nanny says she's in the greenhouse. When Marlene opens the greenhouse, she triggers a trap staged by Peyton and the glass roof shatters. The nanny watches the incident and locks the glass door. She empties Claire's stock of inhalers and brings Joe for a stroll. The mother arrives and proceeds to the greenhouse but discovers Marlene's lifeless body. Her asthma strikes but she fails to find any inhaler, so she calls 911. She remembers her bag in the greenhouse but she falls on the veranda, gasping for air. Peyton rolls her eyes upon hearing sirens from the police and the ambulance. The paramedics revive Claire and the nanny pretends to be surprised upon arriving, but the police notice the greenhouse accident. Claire finally regains consciousness in the hospital but remains intubated. Michael reassures her and then returns home. Meanwhile, Solomon watches over the hospital anxiously amidst the pouring rain. Upon arriving home, Michael locks the greenhouse and Peyton fetches him from outside. As they try to dry it out, the woman seduces him. Michael declares that there's only one woman for him and the nanny leaves. A few days later, Claire is discharged from the hospital and Emma spots Solomon following them home. As the family arrives, Peyton welcomes Claire like she's the woman of the house, shows off how she manages Michael's schedule and wears the bracelet from her husband. When Claire enters the nursery, she discovers that the nanny redecorated it, so she comments that someone could have asked her. That night, Claire feels more outcasted as she sees how her family looks better with Peyton in the picture. While Claire goes through her laundry basket, she finds the note her colleague gave her about Marlene's call. The following day, she visits Marlene's office and inquires about the day of the accident. She finds the behavior unusual and sees Dr. Mott's house listing. Claire heads to the mansion and discovers the truth upon seeing the nursery that's exactly like theirs. She returns home and punches the nanny, making her fly onto the dining table. Claire reveals Peyton's identity and the nanny tries to turn things around by asking for Michael's sympathy drowning in her illusion that they have a relationship. The patriarch clarifies that the only woman he pertains to is his wife, so they immediately kick her away. The nanny mistakenly says she'll take her baby, so they don't give her time to pack and retrieve the key. Claire concludes that the house has been rigged and the greenhouse is the evidence, so they call the police and pack their things to stay in a hotel. Unfortunately, since there's no emergency, the police aren't in a hurry to arrive. Just then, Michael hears music in the nanny's room. He sees the small glass window broken and turns off the alarm. He sighs in relief, seeing no one, but as he climbs the stairs, Peyton hits him with a shovel. Claire hears the commotion and instructs Emma to lock the door as she checks it out. She finds Michael and he warns her that the woman is in the house. 
Claire calls 911, but Peyton attacks her with a shovel. Despite evading a few times, she's hit on the head. The deranged woman approaches Emma, who's witnessed everything. She tells the child she's her mom and asks where Joe is. Emma points to the nursery, but it's empty when Peyton sees the crib. The girl declares she's not her mommy as she locks her in. Emma carries Joe and hides away while the nanny breaks the door. As the vicious woman escapes, she looks for the children and hears Joe's cries in the closet. Fortunately, it's the baby monitor she finds. She hears another cry and follows it to the attic, where she sees Solomon helping the kids. The man carries Joe away from her and Claire arrives with a knife. The two face off, but the mother is beaten. Peyton mocks her by stating how she claims her family and how weak she is for having asthma attacks at critical times. She turns to get Joe from Solomon and Claire's breathing turns normal as her act ends. She attacks the nanny and pushes her out of the window. Police sirens ring and Claire thanks Solomon. She entrusts him to carry Joe as they head to Michael, making the carpenter extremely happy. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.